So today I want to talk about why all these mega stars are selling their masters or the rights to their music. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Stein and today I'm talking about why all these mega stars are selling their masters or the rights to their music. Now, in case you don't know what, what a master is, it's the master recording of an artist's music. So in music publishing, and you might want to check out my other videos on this, um, but when an artist writes a song, you have a, a songwriter and someone who composes the music, who's also the songwriter. And then they own the song itself, the music and the, the lyrics. And then you, when you go and record a song, the recording that is used, that's put out on the, the digital streaming platforms, or in the past was sold on cassette or vinyl or CD, that master recording became the main recording by which all reproductions of that recording were made. So when you sell the masters, you're selling the rights to that particular recording of the song, which is the, the version that all of us have come to know and, and enjoy when it comes to stars. Now, recently, Bob Dylan, maybe one of the, the most popular or famous songwriters in the last hundred years, sold his entire catalog for an undisclosed amount of money which some people uh, estimated to be around $300 million. Uh, recently, uh, and I, I don't think it was a coincidence, on the same day that the Capitol was, was uh, entered by that group of protesters, Neil Young sold his, I think, 50% of his catalog for $150 million. And uh, some of you may also be aware that uh, the rapper Lil Wayne sold his catalog, all of his catalog for a little bit over a hundred million. And it makes uh, uh, it's it's caused a lot of outcry. Uh, people people judging or making uh, making assessments about whether that was a good idea or bad idea. And I wanted to just kind of break down uh, what what happened and my perspective on the whole thing. Uh, which is, of course, just my opinion, but I thought I'd sound or, or I thought I'd uh, contribute to the conversation. And as always, I'd love to hear what, what your response is in the comments below. But um, the, the people, the group or the investment um, groups or institutions that are buying these, well, the group that bought Bob Dylan's and Lil Wayne's uh, catalogs is the Universal Music Group, which is one of the big four record labels. And so, obviously, they have connections and ways of making money with the rights to this music. But we also have another private a private equity group that, that, that or investment group that bought uh, Neil Young's works. So, what I want to do is I want to get into what, what they did, why they did it, and uh, what that means for them and, and, and why certain perspectives that are being thrown around about why they did it or, or why they shouldn't have done it might be illegitimate. So all the information that, that I'm going to share with you now is from RIAA.com, which is the Recording Industry Association of America's website, which counts all the legitimate streams and uh, units sold. Units sold is now a, a phrase that includes streams, physical copies. Um, in order to keep track and to uh, make uh, it clear which artists in the history, no matter what, whether you're in the streaming uh, era or not, uh, who sold the most copies, who's the best-selling artist of all time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Also, it's good. It's a good way to go and check uh, how many albums went gold, how many singles went gold, for example. So, uh, if we look at the list, I mean, people like Taylor Swift are number 31 on the list. Drake, number 79. Taylor Swift sold 46 million uh, units. Drake sold 25.5 million units. So, just to give you kind of a rough uh, estimate or benchmark about where 
these particular artists, Bob Dylan, Neil Young, Lil Wayne are. Uh, Bob Dylan is 46th on that list. Okay, so Bob Dylan has sold 36 million units. Neil Young sold 17.5. I didn't see him in the top 100. Lil Wayne's 111th on the list with 21 million units sold. So, like, in reference to, say, other rappers, uh, Tupac, Eminem, they are not even... Cl Lil Wayne's not even close in terms of the, the amount of records that they've sold. Uh, Outkast, Kanye West, Jay-Z, they're all above Lil Wayne. So, in terms of his uh, commercial success, even though he's a megastar in the hip-hop world, and still is... Um, his value is not as high as some of the top, uh, I guess you could say top tier hip hop artists. But in terms of songwriting, Bob Dylan is, is as popular as it gets. If you, I mean, he, he won the Nobel prize for, uh, poetry recently, which is, which is pretty incredible. And Neil Young had, has had a super long career, decades and decades like Bob Dylan, and so what these guys did is that they sold their masters to uh, either a, a record label or a uh, investment group. So what they did was give up the rights for them to take or receive uh, royalties from the use of this master recordings, uh, depending on which ones they sold. Now, the outcry is, is that in today's world, if you're watching a video like this, you've probably seen a lot of videos already about how shady the industry is, how record labels and record contracts, recording contracts, are often putting the artists at a disadvantage. And you don't need to look very far to see uh, the, the repercussions of this. I think one of the greatest examples and maybe the, 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 the pioneer in this whole movement of, hey, you need to own your own masters if you're an artist, uh, starts with uh, Prince. Prince was very swat, uh, savvy in, in the way that he handled uh, his dealings with the record label and put himself in a position that allowed other artists to see him as an example of hey, we don't need to give up the rights to our recording or to our songwriting. So the main outcry against people like Lil Wayne, uh, and I think he's getting a little bit more of this uh, because of the, the hip-hop community is, is much more, uh, I think, in tune with, with the backlash of the repercussions of selling your masters early on. Uh, but that's not necessarily true because... Uh, Neil Young is was a very vocal person against selling one's masters or, or even selling out in terms of what he was saying with going commercial with your music and commercials or, or in, in TV and, and whatnot. So the outcry is, is primarily along these lines. Why would you give up uh, a consistent income of funds that would provide you and maybe your family after you generational wealth. And that's a, that's a valid point because uh, if, if, these, if this, these music recordings are generating income for as long as these, uh, these musics, this music's being used, then it is, it is going to provide an income for the, not only the artist, but the artist who, who, who passes down the rights to his or her family. But think about this. Bob Dylan, Neil Young, and Lil Wayne are already mega rich based off owning their masters. The entire reason for why they're rich is because they own their masters from the beginning. So the argument that, oh, th you shouldn't sell your masters is coming from the argument that people who have sold their masters were not able to make the money that people who held on to their masters made. So it doesn't really make sense that people are condemning Lil Wayne or Neil Young about selling their masters because the very reason they held on to them in the first place was to make money off them. 
Now, I want you to think about this. I think about think about the lottery. If you won the lottery, you have the option of taking um, a monthly or yearly income based on uh, the proceeds that you win, or you can take it in a lump sum. Now, a lot of people uh, take it in a lump sum, and the reason why they do that is because that money can be invested and earn a yearly income uh, based off the principle of that money at a much higher rate than what what they're receiving in royalties in terms of, let's say, Little Wayne or Neil Young or Bob Dylan. Let's say they, they make a couple million uh, per year off their music, off the revenue of the music that, that they've created in the past. Now, that may be a lowball number, but imagine if you're Bob Dylan and you just sold your catalog for $300 million and you put that in the stock market that, that, that over the last 10 years has made 10% per year, and I know that's pretty high, but let's just say, let's just say 10%. 10% of $300 million is $30 million a year. And keep in mind, when people say that they've sold their masters, that they're giving up this future income from their money, from, from their music, what do you think the $300 million is? You're not giving up generational wealth. You're getting generational wealth all up front. Uh, and so it makes sense why these artists, especially later on in their life, who aren't necessarily concerned about maybe passing on their income or passing on their wealth. But, I mean, Neil Young and, and Bob Dylan are in their 70s. Maybe in their maybe Dylan's in his 80s. I'm not sure last time I checked. He, I think he's in his late 70s. But imagine what you can do with $300 million. He's not thinking maybe I want to generate money for the rest of my life and for my, gener for, for my kids. Another, here's, the, here's the thing, too, is when, we, when they pass on the rights to their music, they're also passing on the headache of receiving monthly or yearly payments from these record labels or companies that have put out the music. You see, when, when someone owns the rights to their music... Uh, when they, when they get these, they get checks from the labels that they've worked through, or they get checks from, um, companies that use their music, that license it. That's primarily where they're getting their money from. Uh, and, and that's primarily the reason why people have bought their music rights is because they're going to turn around and, and pitch these songs to, to various shows or, or, or commercials, but think about all the issues and headaches, especially Lil Wayne's scenario. For years, decades maybe even, Lil Wayne has been battling his record label, Cash Money, uh, for money that he hasn't received. Now think about the. Now think about if you give him the option of, do I hold on to 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 and, and, and to my music and still try to fight the label and try to get the money that I'm owed every single year and have my accountants make sure that they're doing everything correctly? Or should I just take a lump sum of cash, put it in my checking account, and do whatever I want with it? I'm sure, I'm absolutely sure that Lil Wayne is thrilled to be out of the control of his masters just because he doesn't want to deal with that label anymore. So I say good for him. Um, but the thing is, it, it ultimately comes down to, it ultimately comes down to their choice. I mean, we, when we, when we talk about, you know, you may hear in the comments, you may look in the comments of this video and see people say, well, I'm never going to sell my masters no matter what. Well, the truth is, and, and this is also in other videos that I've made, is that about 95%, maybe even more, of artists that ever exist don't make any money off their music. So their masters are worthless. So if you, if you find somebody whose masters are actually worth something, especially if it's worth $300 million or $100 million, who've had a long career and they aren't interested in marketing this music to, to different licensing groups, it makes sense why they would sell. But the people that are arguing that they shouldn't sell their masters are, are coming from a position of not having any money, not having any money from their music, and thinking and, and, and 
viewing the issue through the mind of someone who has already sold their masters. And a great example of this is, is the, is the R&B group TLC, who were basically winning Grammys and had no money. And the very reason, the very argument that people have about selling their masters is because of examples like TLC. But the person that's poor, or at least the person that's the struggling artist that's touring and sleeping in their car and, and doesn't have enough money for a hotel, which is a lot of people, or maybe they're just someone sitting behind a keyboard that makes, that makes music that isn't, that isn't making any money off of it. Chances are, if you're watching this video about the music industry and about navigating the music industry, the chances are is that you aren't successful yet. And that's fine, but the whole argument that, that one is not going to sell ever, ever going to sell their masters is missing the point of why you hold on to the masters in the first place. And that's either to generate income over the long term or to sell it for a lump sum and invest the money or use the money for whatever you want. So I want to leave the video or my own thoughts with this. The main point of owning your masters is to make money off of it, is to own your own artwork. And what these labels are doing is they are pitching uh, their music, the music that these recordings that we've all come to know and love, especially by big artists like Dylan and Young and Lil Wayne. Think about what, why would, if, if, if the argument is why, if they're going to pay them 300 million, 100 million, 150 million for the rights to these musics, um, then they must be much worth much more than what they paid the artists for. And that's true. That is true. It, these, these companies, Universal Music Group is not dumb. They're doing this because they know that they can make more money than what they put into it, which is another argument why it's dumb for them to have sold uh, their rights. But again, this also reveals a lack of knowledge about what a record label does. Now, I may own all the rights to my music, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to be able to do the same opportunities or have the same um, opportunities than Universal Music could do with it. You see, like I'm just one person, and I know I know Wayne and and Bob Dylan and Neil Young have have massive teams and massive people behind them and connections, and they can plug their music. But think about the coming wave of content through groups like Netflix. Hulu, Disney Plus, all these new shows, all these new movies that are coming out through these uh, networks or, or companies, they all need music. They all need B-roll music. They all need introductory music. They need uh, all kinds of content in order to put into these, these, this content of, of film and, and television and and think about it. Neil Young has never, ever had his songs in a commercial. Think now that Universal Music Group has bought the rights to Neil Young. Neil Young's music's probably going to start being in commercials. Now, the thing is about that is that these labels have teams and teams and buildings of people whose entire job is to place these songs in music, television, and commercials, radio, not as music, but not, not as songs in particular, but as background music, as music that, that supports another piece of content. And the reason why Universal Music Group buys the rights to the music is because they have so many connections and such a team of people in place that they can, they can maximize on the ownership of the music that maybe a single artist can't do or wants to do. This is a whole nother career. If, if, if Bob Dylan was to just stop making music and focus 100% on being a music publisher, he could do that. But I don't think he wants to. And I don't think Lil Wayne wants to do that either. In fact, I think Lil Wayne wants to make as much money as he can on his back catalog, and he'll probably continue making making music for the next 20 years, maybe his whole life, maybe the next 40 years, who knows? You can have your cake and eat it too. I, I really want to discourage people from thinking that this is a black and white thing, 
that it's 100% or 0%, that it's all or nothing, because it's not. It's, it's individual uh, scenarios for each of these people. Some of these people may want to buy two houses, three houses, four houses. They may want to take care of their family. They may want to do some big expense thing. They may be broke for all we know. All of them have reasons for doing this. But I think it's important for us, as especially as artists that are, that are unheard of or on the rise or trying to get our foot in the door or try to navigate what's going on with the music industry and why these people are doing it, it's really important for us to look at the big artists and see what they're doing and why they're doing it because it helps us understand what the big picture is. And even though the trend these days, at least, over the last couple of years that I've been on YouTube, the arguments have been almost exclusively for not selling your masters. And I just wanted to come on here and, uh, and offer some, some different opinions. And uh, I'm not saying that they should or shouldn't. I'm just saying there's a lot of reasons why they did. And a lot of reasons why Universal wants the wants that music that has nothing to do with them taking advantage of artists, but that they know what to do once they own it that an artist may not be wanting to do. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Um, I If you like the videos, please share them with your friends, people who might care. And uh, I, I'm really grateful that you're watching and uh, if you subscribe. So thanks again. And we'll see you again next time.